So we decided that the fifth side goes up. So that means it goes like that. So and once again, for, for you all, you can carve from either side that you want. And, uh, but, but it's good to know why you would choose one side or the other, and then you can make an informed decision. So, so basically, I guess for looks, you would choose uh, bark side up, especially if you weren't painting it. Right. Uh, and for keeping it flat, you would choose pith side up. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have any defects, they would override those considerations. That's, that's good. well well put. And okay. of course, if you've got a knot, so 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 let's address a couple. There was actually an email question we can address right now. First off, the okay. email question was about a check. So the check is typically on the on the uh, bark side. Uh, if if you have a check on the pith side. I call it a crack. Now, the reason I call it a crack is because it's because it's too close to the pith and it's juvenile wood. Whereas on the bark side, I call that a drying check. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's textbook or not. That's just, just what I call it. So if, if you have a, a check, most of the time, I'll turn that check down. If it's bad enough, I'll put a butterfly in it. Uh, now, if you think that you might carve through it, then, and you wanted to carve from that uh, bark side, then sure, give it a try. The chances of you carving into it are pretty small because I don't think the check's going to be that deep. If it's that deep, your board's going to crack anyway, so it's too weak. Now, with a knot, you've got kind of the same thing going on. Which side do you carve from? Typically, with a knot, if I can put it on the spindle deck between the spindles, that's where I put it. And that the, the mylar patterns enable you to do that because you can see. Um, but if it's kind of out in the middle of the seat, then I'll try to carve from the um, uh, pith side, which is where the knot's going to be, because that's the juvenile tree, and try to place it at the deepest carving point that I possibly can so I'll carve through it, okay? Uh, but if it's, if it's on the pith side, of course it's gonna be on the pith side, and I wanna carve from the bark side, then I will try to put it in the shallowest part of the seat to where I have a less likelihood of uncovering that knot when I'm carving. So, anything to add Makes to that? Makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Try and either get rid of it if you can carve it out or not run into it if you're leaving it in. Yeah, well put again. <laughs> okay, so I do have a crack in the seat. It runs down to about there. I don't know if it's a check or a crack. We'll have to ask Curtis. And it's on the pith side? Yeah. Wow, okay. Well, it's a good thing um, about the Democratic chair. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No matter yeah. if it's got cracks in it. I don't, I don't. <laughs> um, but I can get rid of most of it, not all of it. I don't have any cracks on this end. Um, now, we want the, uh, uh, the grain of the seat runs front to back in this chair. I don't know that there's any rhyme or reason to that. Do you have an answer to that, Curtis? Well, if it's, if it's extreme, if it's not extreme, like yours is not, then it doesn't matter. You could turn the back of the chair either way. But if you get one extreme, in other words, you have four or five ellipses on your, on your board, then you're going to want to put the spindle deck at the end of the planing direction. Okay, because... I got to scratch my head for a minute, Curtis. What is that? I got lost. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So which way is that board planing? Oh, uh, it's planing this way. Okay, so if it was extreme, in other words, if there were four or five ellipses that were showing themselves there, I would turn that pattern around and put the spindle deck back where your hand is, yes. Ah. Okay, so the reason why is 
when you're carving with the with the scorp, you want to be cutting across those wood fibers, not ending up dead on them. If, in other words, that tree has been cut, that plank has been cut just exactly to where it's the angle that you're carving from the front of the seat to the deepest part in it. If you happen to just line right up with that, it uh, it'll tear you up. You'll you'll tear out coming and going. But if you flip it around, you're clipping across those wood fibers same way you would if you were planing a board. Okay, and it's going to cut clean, and you can kind of carve with what I like to call reckless abandon. Uh, <laughs> the way I like to carve the seats. I don't like to mess around with it. Uh, so did that make sense, Alia? Because if it, it didn't make sense, sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If it didn't make sense to you, then I wasn't explaining it right. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so it, one thing I learned from Curtis is that the seat looks nice if um, the center of the tree is lined up with the center of the seat so that your, your uh, growth rings are centered on the seat. So I've slid this thing all the way over this this way as far as I can um, so that these these growth ring lines are more or less centered on the centered on the seat um, I guess one question we could answer is why doesn't the seat go that way right and I guess it could I guess that's the answer <laughs> you know I mean I usually will lay the seat out with the length of this with the long wood fibers running the greatest length of the seat. So the sack back runs the other way because it's 20 inches in across the grain uh, direction if you were gonna do it that way. And uh, uh, so you turn it to make it with the long wood fibers. But this seat is 17 and a quarter one way and 17 and three quarters the other way. But it just seems like to me, I mean, you know that, it would be stronger to turn it the way that I, I always turn it. It certainly is easier to carve this way, um, especially this area that you're drawing right there. That would get real tough if you're carving in grain right there. <laughs>